Hey, I'm RC and welcome to the sixth episode about creating a game in HTML5. So if you haven't watched the last episode, then I would highly recommend you to do, do, do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So, so far, this is how the game looks. We got our enemies bouncing around randomly. We got our player bouncing around randomly. What we will do in this video is to add interactivity. So we'll be able to control the player with our mouse and we'll also add HP. So when the player um, collides with an enemy instead of just saying collide in the console log it will actually decrease the HP of our player. Okay so this is our code right now so one thing I will do is change the notation for the function. I know it does not seem linked with um, interaction and stuff like that but don't worry you will see the link pretty soon. Um, so there are two ways to create a function. The first one is this one function name of the function and then the parameters and there's the other um, notation which is entirely equivalent. Um, you say the name of the function equal function, parameters, and then the body. Those two do exactly the same thing. The only difference is um, when the function is created. So this, the get distance between entity, how it works is that the browser start at the top, goes down, and then O oh, creates the function. Well, in the other end, if you put function and then the name, um, this function will be created before enemies. So before this function is called, this function will be created because it starts with function and everything that starts with function is loaded before executing code. So um, I guess we can delete this. So the problem is here, right there we use a function enemy. It works even like we are trying to call the function enemy before we actually define what enemy is. But it works because it starts with function. But if we put this, then it will crash because enemy will no longer be defined because it's only defined here. So we need to take this code and place it there. So let's just um, apply the logic everywhere. Update entity right here. Update here. And for the update, there's also the problem because we are um, using it here even though it's not defined. We'll take this wall block and put it at the end like so. So this is the notation that is used in JavaScript 99.9% .9 of the time. So um, I really want to make you familiar with the notation. So name equal function, etc. There's a lot more tricks you can do with this notation um, than the other one. It will be more obvious when we will start working with class and prototype and, and stuff like that and callbacks. Um, so the other thing I want to do is to split the update entity into two functions because um, right there what we do is that we update the position, then we draw the entity and then we test the, um, the boundaries. So we will split this function into two functions. One will be draw entity that will take the parameter something and we will draw. And then we will create a function called update entity entity position. And this function will do all this right there. And our update entity is basically we call update position and then we call draw entity. So the two things are entirely equivalent except they are split into function. It seems like more code, but it will make more sense later on. Okay, so now I guess I'm ready to introduce interactivity. So one very important thing to understand is that you cannot ask the browser where the mouse is. I know it, it kind of sounds weird, but if you ask the browser, hey, where the mouse is, the browser will say, no, I'm not telling you. What we can ask, ask though is, hey, browser, whenever the mouse moves, tell us where the mouse is and the browser will be no problem bro I will tell you this I know it's counterintuitive but this is how it works and it also how the um, keys work so the keystroke so you will have to deal with it this is how it works in browser um, so long story short there's a function called document on mouse move and this function is called whenever um, some the mouse moves pretty much. And by default, this is a function that does absolutely nothing. So nothing happens when the mouse move. So what we will want to do is to overwrite it with this function, with a function we, we create. So let's say that, hey, now mouse move is this function. So it takes one parameter, which is the information about the mouse. 
And um, long story short, there's the mouse X client X and the mouse client Y. Don't ask me why it's client Y and client X. It, it's just the way it is. And this will tell us the mouse X and mouse Y. So this function is called every time the mouse moves. And then we can simply apply the logic here. So let's say that what we want to do is to set the position of the player to the um, to the position of the mouse. So now everything seems fine, but there is still a little problem because in our update loop, what we do is we update the entity player. And if you remember correctly, update entity is update the position and then draw the entity. But we no longer want to use the update entity position, like adding the, the speed to the X value. We don't want this anymore because we are moving with a mouse. So what we are going to do is to change update entity to just draw entity player. So, and this is why I split the function in the first place. Okay, so now let's just see how it goes. So let's just save, open the browser, update, and there we have it. We got our player that we can move with our mouse. And if we um, collide with enemies, it will be displayed in the um, console log. Okay, so now what I will do is to add HP to our player. So we'll go here, our object player, we will add something new called um, HP, which will be 20 by default, or let's say 10. It will be 10 by default. And when we collide, we already have the code for colliding right here. So in our update loop, we loop through the list of enemies. And if they are colliding, we say, hey, collide. But instead of saying, hey, collide, what we will do is to um, reduce the HP by one. So HP equal HP minus one. And another thing that would be nice to know is what is the current HP of our player? So right there, after drawing the player, what we could do is to um, draw the HP. So fill text player HP at position 0, 30, for example. So this will draw the HP. We could also add um, HP. So we know it's HP. It's not just a random number because this is only a number. The player will not know if it's HP or anything else. Um, or it could be lives or whatever. So now we'll reduce by 1. So let's see how it looks. We got our 10 HP. If I collide, it goes negative. So yeah, it's kind of dumb. <laughs> and we need to put code to um, to tell the browser what happens when the HP goes below zero. So if the HP is below or equal zero, this is what will happen. We will um, do a console log you lost, and we will also put the HP back to 10, for example. So this is how it looks. We got our player when it goes down to um, less than zero, it says you lost and so on. So now one thing we might want to know is how long the player managed to survive before losing. And the goal of the game would be to survive as long as possible. So right at the top, what we will do, this is no longer used. Um, what we will do is to create a new variable called time when game started. And this will be equal to date now. So this is a special function that the browser um, gives us, and it will return a um, return the time in milliseconds since a certain point in time. We don't really care about the value of this. We simply want to compare this value, so when the game started, with the time when the game the player lost. So time survived survive will be the time now when the player died and the time time when the game started and then we can say hey you lost you survived four and then we add this which is in millisecond there is 1000 millisecond in one second and then we simply restart the game and to restart the game what we need to do is to set this to time now because otherwise it would just increase forever okay so let's see how it looks so we open whoops here update so we got our p 
and we try to survive and it says you lost you survive for a 4000 millisecond Okay, so I guess that's pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to click the annotation on the screen if you want to watch out the next video. So what I'm planning to do is to fix a bunch of bugs we have with the game. So the, the first and most obvious one is that we can go out of bound and never die. There's also a little glitch with the positioning of our player, which is not perfect. And uh, another thing that would be cool is if we add more enemies, the longer the player survives. Because with only three enemies, it's way too easy. So, um, thanks again for watching, and see ya!